This video is going to contain a few different tips and tricks uh, that you can use when um, using Laravel. And the first thing we're going to talk about is how you can grab the column names from any of your tables um, using the query builder in Laravel. Um, so the first thing we're doing is um, we're starting off our statement with db uh, table and then we're passing that information schema.columns. And basically this is a internal table in MySQL um, that we always have access to and we can use it to find out um, information about our tables. So that's the first part of the query and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tack on a where clause and we're saying where table underscore schema is equal to our database name. So no matter if you're in a, a production environment or local or testing, you can always access your current database name using config get and then the dot syntax and then you're going to drill down into that array um, basically using the dot syntax just as I've done right here. Um, of course the first part is the file name without the dot PHP and the next part is the different um, elements of the array. The next thing we'll do is add on another where clause and we're going to say where table name is equal to whatever table name you want. In my case I just have this table right here and basically this model here is going to select um, a database table dynamically because this application that I'm creating right here um, it has multiple different implementations so if I just go over to my browser for a second you'll see one of the implementations um, is this recycling site that I've uh, just got started on so I need to select these tables dynamically so um, you know you always have that option available to you so in my case because this table is set um, dynamically um, it must be done inside the constructor and that is going to set um, the protected table uh, of this class. And finally we use get um, in order to return the collection. So um, let me just uncomment this right here and let's take a look at it in the browser. And you'll see what we get returned is an array of uh, basically column objects. So we have um, 14 elements in the array here so that's 14 columns and each of the elements is an object and we have different sorts of um, information inside the column object you can get the column name you can get the column comments um, you can get uh, what is the type of the column so here we have a varchar um, so there's all sorts of different uh, information available to you there one thing that you'll notice is that I use D in order to bug this instead of DD um, I'll just show that you the difference here if I refresh here um, you'll see that's not formatted anyway. So what I've done is I've actually just augmented um, the dump and die function Laravel. If I go over to my helpers here, um, you will see that at the top. So basically all I'm doing here is I want to see um, where it's dumped from. So I've done that um, using debug backtrace function. So what debug backtrace is going to do is it's going to return you an array of all of the different files that have been accessed um, basically in a most recent order. So all of the different files that have been accessed um, that have been a part of your scripts execution. So um, I'm not interested in this helpers file, I'm interested in the one that was right before it, um, which is where the um, where the dump happened from. So I just uh, access the first element there with a zero and then I want the file. So this is totally optional but I've been uh, I've been using this lately just so I can see um, where the dump actually occurred. Sometimes, you know, when you have a lot of different files, you can forget um, where you've dumped something from. So um, debug backtrace might be a solution to help with that. And then what I do after that is I simply print out a pre-tag, and then I use Laravel's built-in DD function in order to um, dump out that variable. So let's just go back over to the browser and take a look at this. And basically what I'm interested in is I want to grab all of the different columns names and I want to place them into their own array. So I want to have a single array with um, the name of the first element, the name of the second one, the name of the third one, etc. I'm not interested in anything else. And there's a very good helper function in Laravel to do this which is called array pluck. So I'll show that to you. So let's just move this down here, move that up a bit. So with array pluck, um, the first argument that you pass it 
um, is the array that it's going to work on. And the second argument is what you want to extract from that. And what is going to be returned from this function is a new array uh, containing only the um, elements of the array that you want to pluck out. And they're going to be placed in their own array. The really interesting thing about array pluck is that this will work on an object and it will also work on an array. So if I go over to Laravel's helper file for a second, you'll see the array pluck function right here. And there's actually a check that's happening. Um, first, we're checking if it's an object. And if it is an object, then we're returning uh, the property from that object. But if it's not, then we know it's an array. And then we're going to return that element from the array. So no matter if you have an array of objects or an array of, of arrays, you're going to be able to use array pluck on it in order to take out only the element that you want and return that in, in order to form a new array. So this statement has been executed now and we have this new variable columns. So let's just go over to the browser and take a look at that. And you will see our new array um, of all of the different column names from the table. The last thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to remove um, a few different things from this array. And um, that wasn't too hard to do. Basically, um, you see what I'm left with here is a numbered array. So I'm not going to be able to use um, I'm not going to be able to use the unset function because um, that's a numerical array. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm looping through all of the columns, and then I'm checking if uh, basically the column name is not uh, in this array of ones that I don't want. And if it's not in that array of them, then I'm going to push it onto this new fields array, and then finally I'm setting the form fields of this class. Uh, equal to fields. So if I move my D function down here and I just replace that with fields, when we take a look at that, um, you'll see that those three columns that I didn't want have now been removed.